All of the E3 conferences finally concluded. Now it's time to take a look and a deeper dive into who won E3, what presentation was the best, and what presentations were the worst. So you guys keep it locked right here on the Soul Dojo. So let's roll the intro. <laughs> Microsoft, like they always do, went first. Last year, Microsoft had a really good conference with Gears 5 and Halo Infinite leading the way. Their pacing of their show was really great. A lot of great games came out of that show last E3. But without PlayStation at E3, Microsoft had a good chance to have a head start on revealing their new console generation and their new Xbox, which is called Xbox Project Scarlet. Now, we didn't get a lot of details. We kind of got the kind of like this developer video saying how great it was to work on a big console like Project Scarlet. We also got to learn that the game console will go up to about 120 frames per second, which is pretty bananas, which is pretty crazy for a console. Also, they got to unveil Elder Ring and DBZ Kakarot, new IPs, and that's kind of what it's like when you are a big developer and you have a lot of third-party titles to choose from. So they unveiled those games, which look great. But the best moment of E3 happened during Microsoft's press conference. It was Keanu Reeves coming out to unveil Cyberpunk 2077, unveil that he was going to be in the game, and you guys can check out my reaction right now on my ninja. Better not be him, bro. I'm gonna lose bro, my is that him? That's yeah. 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 Oh my god. Oh my god. As you guys can tell, we were very excited about that, and that is definitely the best moment of E3. Also, we got a release date for Cyberpunk 2077. It's going to be April 2020. Now, you guys know I absolutely love this game. I am over the moon for Cyberpunk 20, uh, 2077, and I cannot wait for that game, but it was good to finally get a release date, and it's good that Keanu Reeves was in it, so good moment for Microsoft there. They ended their presentation with a trailer of Halo Infinite. We didn't get too much more info on that. I was hoping to get a little bit more info on Halo Infinite, but we just learned that it's going to be an exclusive to Xbox Project Scarlet, and it's pretty exciting, but nothing else really exciting for Xbox. There were some smaller games that kind of killed the pacing of the whole overall presentation. Not enough exclusives from Xbox either. We got like two new exclusives, probably one from Ninja Theory called Bleeding Edge, but there was no Fable, no big, big exclusives coming to the Xbox Project Scarlet, and that kind of let me down. But I'm going to give Microsoft the grade of a C plus. Some good stuff there. Some things I was disappointed. But overall, a pretty decent showing from Xbox. Bethesda had a pretty weak showing for me. They needed to have a good one given a pretty down 2018 that they had with Fallout 76. But straight up, the best things out of this conference were Doom Eternal. Now, Doom Eternal looks great fast-paced. It looked like the first Doom game, but it looks like they just added a lot more gore and a lot more guns and just craziness. It looked great. They announced that Fallout 76 was going to get a Battle Royale mode, and they were finally going to put NPCs into the game, which they probably should have had in there the whole time but they've they wanted to get your $60 first before they started actually updating and fixing the game of course they spent eight minutes on a mobile game called commander king yeah commander king which was pretty ridiculous they showed a game called ghostwire which actually looked kind of interesting they also announced orion which was a piece of high hardware that was going to help you stream games to stadia at max settings which was pretty interesting but the audience seemed a little overzealous about everything especially the half-ass elder scrolls blades game that's now coming to switch from mobile really wasn't too interested in that no new news on elder scrolls 6 no new news on starfield which was probably the biggest announcements last year at e3 which was pretty sad. So not a lot from Bethesda's conference. Another week showing from them. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to give Bethesda here a D. Ubisoft swung out with a very ambitious new Watch Dogs game called Watch Dogs Legions where you can recruit anybody from the streets of London to be part of DeadSec. It seems pretty cool and ambitious, but the last two Watch Dogs games, 
left a very bad taste in my mouth and I'm not too sure about jumping into this one I just got to see more details Ghost Recon Breakpoint had a big showing with John Barathol being the leader of the wolves in the games which is pretty cool um, I definitely need to see more details on that because I did not like Ghost Recon Wildlands Just Dance made their yearly appearance with a it wasn't even really long and drawn out like it usually is they just went out danced okay cool a new Rainbow Six game called Rainbow Six Quarantine is coming it looks like there's like an effect going on and I'm really hyped about a new Rainbow Six game it looks awesome it looks like a different direction than the last one the division 2 is getting some new episodes you get to go to the Pentagon you're gonna be sent on a manhunt and they're gonna take you outside of DC it makes a lot of sense because I didn't think DC was gonna be a big enough area to contain such a big the division game so I love the fact that they're doing that also if you love Ubisoft games you you play plus is a service coming to pc that's going to let you play over 100 ubisoft games so there you go ubisoft ended their show with a game called gods and monsters it kind of looked like breath of the wild and it's a new game from the developers of assassin's creed odyssey really interesting i want to see more details of it it looks early in development so we'll probably see it within the next couple of e3s no beyond a good evil 2 no assassin's creed and no splinter cell i think that was a real big heartbreaker for a lot of people especially me i'm gonna give ubisoft the grade of a c minus for their efforts it was okay it was decent but it had some hit or misses there Square had a very boring and bad E3 last year, but they did have some games in their back pocket that interest me this year. Outriders and the remaster of Crystal Chronicles and The Last Remnant were really cool. Dragon Quest Builders looks fun, and Oninaki looks like an amazing game. I remember seeing that game at another Nintendo Direct that happened a few months ago, and it just looks great. We got a little bit of story content and some combat. Looks like a great game. They also showed Dying Light 2, which was a big game for Square this year. Square was also throwing out a lot of games that I liked at a very decent pace. The, the conference pace was really well done. They also showed the brand new Avengers game from Crystal Dynamics that they were working on. Now, I do have my doubts about this title. They did have a good showing with this title, though. They came out. They were very energetic about it. They broke it down. They talked a lot about it, and I did like it. So I'm going to give Square a decent C. They didn't do too much, but there was, there was some surprises in there. Not, oh, my God, surprises, but they were okay. So a C is good enough for them. Nintendo had all the tools to take E3 this year and their conference was really really good Nintendo's pacing of their conference was amazing with remarkable showings of major titles coming to the Nintendo switch Also showing smaller games that went by very quickly, but they were looking very interesting Also new smash characters from Dragon Quest and more excitingly Banjo and Kazooie are coming to smash Luigi's Mansion got a longer showing with mechanics eight-player co-op also Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening got a release date of September 2019, which was a lot earlier than I thought. I thought I thought we was going to get it maybe in November, but a lot earlier, and I'm very excited for that game. Uh, you can also customize your own dungeon in that game. The Witcher 3 rumors came true. It's amazing because it's like, wow, how can Nintendo Switch handle such a big game like The Witcher 3? Also, No More Heroes 3 is coming. Nintendo showed more games that were coming very soon within the next couple of months, like Astrial Chain and Marvel Ultimate. In Alliance 3 excited for both of those games but then Animal Crossing New Horizons got the spotlight it deserves I'm so excited for that game and it looks amazing also at the very very end a big surprise from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild getting a sequel which absolutely blew me away I was getting Majora's Mask vibes with them being underneath the castle and in, in like a cave or something but it looked amazing it was a really good presentation from Nintendo and I'm going to get Give them the grade of a B along with the crown of winning E3 for me this year. They were really great and really amazing. So that is it, you guys. Nintendo takes the cake for me. Make sure you guys get in the comments and let me know what you guys think of E3. Go ahead and give your own grades for all of these publishers and just let me know and let's talk about video games. Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe to the Soul Dojo Gaming Channel. I've been Curtis Russell and I will check you guys later, all right? Peace. Viewers beware. It's 
smart but still ain't knowing nothing Sick and sipping Robitussin The hell I not myself today Give it a sec, the flow is coming Be the type of dude you wanna ask him if he holding something Got that high tech sword by rolling up with Be in the section with the people that I'm smoking with Hit it then I hold it in, hold it then I choke again I'm that socialist, vocalist, you show your friends More to corruption than some Donald Trump emoluments That really says a lot about society 